So we are starting today what we can say leadership proper and Kadek, as we see in all all of his works, he starts everything from a very strong foundation. He puts to us a solid foundation for us to continue to grow, continue to build up that house, right? From the foundation up. And the most important thing on this foundation of spiritism is the to be comfortable with the understanding, not the belief, but the knowledge and understanding of our existence without the physical body, of our existence after this body perish and we go somewhere else and continue to be what we are. And he did that in part uh, uh, in part one, as we today we start part two, right? And if someone is still not comfortable with this understanding, not believe, I'm it, not talking about believe. Kardec's not about making us believe in things. Kardec's about making us understanding and knowing things, of course, to the best of our abilities, but comfortable with the understanding and knowledge of the existence of spirits without flesh, of us without a physical body. Now, if you we <clears throat> move next to the next part, now Kardec will expand building that house of knowledge for us, right? And and here is going to deal with the action of spirits upon matter. The part two is actually titled "Spirits Manifestations." So, if no one is really comfortable with the existence of spirits, of us living, being ourselves, having sensations, have uh, emotions, have uh, sentiments, and have intelligence without a physical body, I think we should go back and read everything again of, of the first part. Since we cannot do it collectively, I suggest that individually, anyone who needs to go back, please go back. Today we start chapter one, Action of Spirits Upon Matter. A lot of things over here is well known by us, can always learn something again for the first time, even though you have read it more than once, you can always learn things. And we're going to talk about, hopefully we're gonna get to uh, the Paris spirit. And I wanna anticipate right now that not gonna go beyond what Kardec's telling us here about the Paris spirit. Um, because it will be further discussed, discussed it later, and I don't want to anticipate the book itself. But the again, then understand the knowledge of Paris Spirit is fundamental for the <clears throat> understanding of mediumship. So I want to make sure that we know, get what Kardec's talking about Paris Spirit here when we come to it. And I would urge anyone to have questions, discuss, disagree, so we be comfortable with this new entity that is being presented to us, which is the, the Paris spirit, okay? Um, so, right here, what can you read? Yes, I'm okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, chapter one, the action of spirits upon matter, and 52. Now that we have rejected the materialist theory because it is condemned both by reason and the facts, we must now determine whether or not the soul after death can manifest itself to the living. Thus reduced to its simplest expression, the issue be becomes very easy to address. First, we must ask why the intelligent beings who to some extent live among us, although invisible by nature, could not somehow make their presence felt in some matter. Common sense tells us that there is nothing completely impossible about the idea, which in itself is at least something to start with. Moreover, this belief has the acceptance of all cultures in its favor because we find that it has been held everywhere and in all ages. In addition, 
an intuitive idea could not be, have become so widespread or have survived down through time without having some reason behind it. It is also sanctified by the testimony of the scriptures and the church fathers. And it took the skepticism and materialism of our own century to relegate it to the idea of superstitious ideas. Therefore, if we are in error, those authorities are equally so. But these are only philosophical considerations. One cause of us above all others has contributed to fortifying doubt in an, an era that is as possible as ours, in which everyone needs to know everything and in which everyone wants to know the why and how of all things. That cause is ignorance concerning the nature of spirits and of the means through which they are able to manifest themselves. Once this understanding is acquired, the fact of such manifestations presents nothing surprising and falls into line with the order of natural events. Okay, thanks. Okay. Okay, so again, let's assume that everyone is comfortable with the, our existence of eternal spirits, the existence of spirits in the spiritual dimension, in the spiritual realm amongst us, here in this room with us, wherever you are, there are spirits, hopefully having the opportunity to understand themselves, about themselves as much as we are about to understand about ourselves and the possibilities of communicating of the communication between the two planes of existence. And again, context is not about, about making us believe in things, it's about making us understand things. And the only way that make things understandable is by using of reason, right? So now that reason have rejected the materialist theory, Let's consider, and Kardec is very humbled to say, that let's consider the possibility of spirits communicating with incarnate spirits. And he used the word, the, the word soul. So we now must determine whether or not the soul after death can manifest itself by living. This is not by because I made a mistake, use the word so erroneously here, right? Kardec is still building up the definition of so to us, okay? So, so far, so far, Kardec is using the, the word so in a very generic way, just meaning spirits. And finally, and later, he will define, even in this chapter, so as a spirit associated with matter, right? That's associated to physical body, right? It's a soul by definition. So this is not a, make an mistake. it's not a mistake by Kardec. He has not come to the definition in this book of what is a soul in accordance to spiritists, to, 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 the, to the doctrine, right? And in very humble, he says, let's at least consider the possibility, all right, that, um, Spirits may be able to associate with us and help let us ask some questions. And one question that we can ask is we understand, we don't know God, but we understand that God is all love, all justice. And God created laws that is meant for our happiness. And then we have the question, well, we die, we leave our physical body, we go back to the spiritual world, we, co we continue to have intelligence, feelings, sentiments, but what do you do with that intelligence, with those feelings, with the sentiments? What is, what is the purpose of having intelligence, feelings in the spiritual world? How tragic and tormenting it would be 
to go back to the spiritual world, having feelings, having sentiments, and not being able to act on it. How unfair it would be to have loved ones left behind in, on, in the physical world, but not being able to have any kind of interaction with them. Would it be like putting someone in a solitary confinement? You know, being a prison in, in a place where you cannot interact with your loved ones, the ones that you care, that is still in the physical world. So only by reason, the understanding of a, of a God that is all love, that wants what's best for us, the idea of this solitary confinement does not make much sense. It would be more reasonable to imagine that God would provide some means of interaction of with those that we love, with or without the flesh, right? Then this idea is not new. Again, spiritists did not invent, did not discover leadership. It existed throughout history, throughout prehistory, right? And is had been easily accepted by your cultures throughout this planet. Each one can do their own research and they doubt about among the Mayas, among the Chinese, among the Egyptians, among the Native American Indians, some amongst the Native uh, Brazilian Indians. Throughout history of mankind, the idea of this communication between the two planes of existence is is, is a very common place, nothing of absurd, not of supernatural. It was just something, it's just something that happens. And there is most of the time truth in number, especially when those ideas uh, originate in, in cultures that have no contact with one another. To eliminate the, the possibility of inter, inter, interference of, of cultures, but cultures who have absolutely no contact with one another have the common belief in this interaction between of the planes of existences, which is intuitive understanding that God provide provide to us. And unfortunately, because of pride, as we develop somehow intellectually, we start to doubt ourselves, and then come institutions that come in and put restrictions in our way to believe the things that are natural to us and start to create um, dogmas, start to create <clears throat> impose difficulties for us to understand things better. And God clearly puts this one of the causes of our skepticism toward this communication as the church being responsible to it, for, to it for its own particular reasons that I don't think you need to discuss it here. And secondary to those impositions of the church and uh, and the impositions in the church in general, when we we're able to get to free ourselves from the, from the stronghold of the church, we move very strongly to the opposite side. After we being oppressed by religiosity for so long, when you have an escape, we tend to go too far to the other side and start to deny everything that deals with the spirits. And of course, both sides are wrong. Usually the, the truth is somewhere in the middle, right? But not in the middle parallel, but the middle above, like the apex of the pyramid. <clears throat> all this is quite philosophical. God presents all this philosophical discussion to us, but what he's interested in is to bring to us more on a scientific and a science observation, which is spiritism. 
the, the truth about this interaction. And Ryu presents to us here exactly that, what he has done through his observations and the, even the experiments are done with neurons, of course, and his conclusions and analysis are done through observations to come to the conclusion that yes, there is not only the possibility, but it's conclusive, conclusive evidence that spirits communicate with the incarnated spirits. Okay, any, any questions, comment? All right, 53. Okay. The idea that people normally have about spirits makes the phenomenon of spirit manifestations seem incomprehensible at first. Such a phenomenon cannot occur without the action of a spirit upon matter. And that is why those who regard spirits as completely lacking in manner acts with apparently good reason how they can act physically upon it. This is precisely the error, however, for a spirit is not an abstraction, but rather a defined, limited, and circumscribed being. A spirit, while incarnated in a body, comprises the soul. When it leaves the body behind at death, however, it is not deprived of its entire envelope. All spirits have told us that they retain the human form, and in fact, when they appear to us, it is in this form that we recognize them. Let us closely examine the moment in which they have just left life behind. They find themselves in a state of confusion. Everything's, everything is unclear around them. They see their own whole or mutilated body, depending on the type of death. On the other hand, they feel themselves alive. Something tells them that the bo that body lying there belongs to them, but they cannot understand how they can be separated from it. They continue to see themselves in their previous shape. And this sight provokes a strange illusion in some spirits for a certain length of time. They regard themselves as still among the living. They lack enough experience with this new state to be fully convinced of the reality of the situation. When this first moment of confusion dissipates, however, the body seems like all worn out clothing from which they have freed themselves and no longer want. They feel lighter and relief of a burden. They no longer suffer from any physical pain and they are delighted at being able to rise and move through space as they had already done many times in their dreams when they were alive. Nevertheless, in spite of the lack of a body, they notice they have retained their personality. They have a form that neither bothers nor embarrasses them. Finally, they are conscious of their self and their individuality. What are we to conclude from all this? That the soul does not leave everything behind in the grave, but takes something along with it instead. Thank you. Welcome. I'll just get a little bit of card that's going to say later. The spiritual could only bring those information to us if we have acquired some intellectual development. When science have acquired some understanding of abstract concepts of energies that are not, cannot be seen, cannot be palpable, perform lots of activities. Basically, prior to the industrial, revol industrial revolution, everything was articulation, right? All the other forms of, of energies was articulation, was using animals or using our own power, right? Was, everything was palpable, was concrete. And later on that we have the development of using more abstracted form of energies that are not visible, that um, we cannot feel it on your body, cannot carry it, but that performs tremendous, um, that has the tremendous power and performs all kinds of 
activities, right? Um, electricity, we don't see it. I mean, we don't feel, you should not feel it. If you feel it's probably gonna be the end of you and not shock. Um, steam, when you figure out that steam is such a powerful thing that could um, propel locomotives and carry a tremendous amount of weight from point A to point B, and you cannot really, now you understand or sign that there's something physical, right? But at that point it was far from understanding. So my point is the ability to start to dilate our mind towards things that are not articulation, that's not palpable, that's not physical, becomes more possible to us, including the action of spirits into upon matter. But even that, if a spirit is, this, is that is that thing that has no form, that has no, no body, how can it act upon matter? I think the very valid questions that anyone would ask if Emerson would say, unless you prove to me that spirit has something that it can hold to matter, unless you prove to me that spirit can somehow carry on things, I'm not going to believe that they are making tables turn. I'm not going to believe that I'm making um, pianos left eight. How it is possible? And I think that's very reasonable. And Kardec tells you the idea that a spirit has no shape, has no form, basically ignorance, led us to doubt the possibility of manifestation of spirits upon matter. But through mediumship had been disclosed to them that upon death, we go to this short period of confusion. And again, this is not, this is not um, for only spirit that does not know spiritus, even as a spiritus, at the moment of death, we're gonna go to a period of confusion until you figure out what's going on. The great difference upon between the, the ones that does not know spiritus and the ones that does not know spiritus is that once we figure out that, oh yeah, I left my physical body behind, we'll be okay with that. You understand the process. You're not going to be questioned that as long. Our period, period of confusion should be limited, should be lesser than, than others. Okay. Um, I'm talking about only intellectual knowledge. I'm not talking about the moral values here. Okay. So you go that period of confusion. Things are not, are not big sense. Things are kind of foggy. Our mind is foggy. Um, <clears throat> you may or may not, this doesn't apply for everyone, uh, see our non-functional physical body over there that we are fully separated from it, we don't understand anything. If you have no understand whatsoever, we believe that it's still alive because we still think, because we still have feelings, because very often we still have pain, very often pain associated with the cause of death. Right, which makes it us if you don't believe in life after death, then we are alive. Then the physical body is still alive, right? Um, in most of the cases, again, let's take a key that Kardec is, is presenting cases of the, of the general of the average. It's not talking about the exceptions. There are lots of exceptions to what Kardec said here, but we have to stick with the average here, okay? There is always this and that case that is different from what's being presented here. But in average, in general, that's the way things happen. After, after a while, we see ourselves with the appearance of the physical body that we left behind, palpable to us, we can feel, 
we have sense. And then we understand that we are not just a vague, vaporous thing, but that we are still, that we still have a body of a different, or, or density, so to say, of the one that left, left leave behind. And in general, if we have done our homework, we'll be pretty, good, pretty happy with that discovery of ourselves, continue to live in the spiritual world with a body uh, and continue to go. And we'll see that physical body as just an old cloth that does not serve us anymore, and we just leave it behind. So if the spirits reveal this, reveal this to us, those who left the physical body behind and Kardec done the homework and say, well, this individual, this voice over here is calling him or herself as John Doe and who lived in certain part of France and died at a certain time. Let's see if it's true. He goes to the, to the city hall or whatever the place they go and verify, oh, indeed. That was his Don Joe that died at this age, and died because of that, or this and that, and everything matches. No reason to doubt anymore. And this Don Joe is telling us, well, I'm living here with a physical body that is palpable, and, and I'm just a nothing. I have a shape, I have a, some kind of consistency, and I can move things around here. That creates the possibility of us without a physical body um, interact with matter. And that will come later how that interaction happens. But the understanding of having a kind of body, just a kind of body that allows the spirits to interact, to continue to be used to use, be able to use its intelligence demonstrate the possibility of spirits being able to act upon matter. Uh, Ebony, you have your hands raised. Yes, thank you. Um, my question is, so we know of the existence of spirit as, an intellig as intelligent beings. We also understand the distinction between spirit and matter, uh, matter not having any intelligence whatsoever. Um, can we logically conclude that matter, God created matter for the purpose of spirits to interact with or to act upon? Well, that's a great question. And um... in other words, uh, be... matter exists solely for the use of the spirit. Can we can we say that with some kind of um, certainty? Purely philosophical, uh, I would say no. Uh, I'd say there's a little bit arrogant of myself to think that everything happens for my use. Um, and, and I think that is the question that is very hard to understand at our level of understanding right now. But again, it's just an opinion. Um, it is possible that God created all matter for the solo purpose of being used by intelligence. I think it's totally reasonable. Um, I, I reserve at this point of my understanding that to answer this question later, and I choose to be on the humble side and say that God has his own reasons to create things that I'm very far from understanding, but I'm not going to put myself as the reason that God creates things for me to use. And me, I mean, in the intelligence principle as in general. Okay. But one may ask, so what is what do we do the reason so then for matter to exist? I don't have an answer to that. But I I rather stay on the cautious side and just say that God creates things 
for God's own reason, we're too far from being able to even start to think that I can understand that. But I, I don't think God creates things only to please mankind or only to allow man, um, spirits to reach that level of perfection that awaits us. But then again, it's completely personal, and I think each one we have a right answer, and there is no wrong answer to this question. Yeah, I, I think it's, a, it, as you said, it's a very philosophical question, right? Because uh, it makes you wonder if, uh, if God created, the, let's say, the intelligent principle and the universal fluid, which are two separate things, right? And the spirits, uh, the intelligent principle to use matter or everything is matter uh, that comes from the spiritual principle, uh, even a thought, right? Uh, it re we, we would reach the conclusion that uh, the universal fluid exists for the intelligent principle to act. But again, I think I agree with Elmo. It's, uh, it's, it's to, un to try to understand God beyond our ability to, uh, to understand God. But, uh, but, uh, but, you know, for me, it makes sense that uh, everything deriving from the universal fluid uh, is created for the intelligent principle, but very in, the, in a very generic way, not in, in for spirits, but for the, in, the intelligent principle. But again, it's only my opinion again, like I almost said. Thank you. Paco. I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. At the very end, okay, it says here, Elmo, they have retained their personality, one, two, three, four. Well, a, a little bit, can I, can I uh, up the volume? Okay. How is this? The volume. The very end of what? You cannot hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Elmo, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I, I have a question and I'm kind of one, two, three, four, up from the bottom up. Oh, oh you know, five. This says, comma, they notice they have retained their personality, period. They have a form that neither bothers nor embarrasses them. Finally, finally, this is the point. They are conscious of their self and their individuality. Okay, my point is, what? well, I can understand from a perspective, personality is that manifestation on, on, on physicality. And then the self and the individuality is the core being aside from the personality. Because we may have different personalities in different reincarnations. Okay, but the self and the individuality remains one. Um, am, I, am I correct in thinking that way? Yes, yes, huh? yes, yes. Okay. can you hear me? Yes, now I yes. can hear you now, yes. Okay. Yes, yes, that's, that, that's correct. And um, let's not go beyond our present understand of ourselves. Okay, let's go back to the spiritual world and, and recognize ourselves as being what we are now. Forget about previous uh, existence. Forget about previous personalities, previous roles that we played in previous reincarnations, okay? We will see ourselves as our very last incarnation. Once I leave the Cisco body behind, go back to spiritual world, I recognize myself as Elmo and not Mary from the 15th century, all right? The last, the last personality, the last- <laughs> Right. Okay. And and the individuality is, is in reference with the special that time is to the common idea of the pantheism that you want to leave this physical body behind you become a part of the whole. You know, we lose its in certain way our individuality. But we continue to be what Kardec saying here, you continue to be yourself with your personality, with your individuality, not a one little part of the whole. That's all there is saying here, is to confirm to us that pantheism is a um, 
not a correct uh, idea of our existence um, without a physical body. We don't go back to the whole. We don't become a part of of the whole or part of God or whatever they they say. That's no, what I like stated here. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And this is a very good question also, um, because there is all this misconception of what happens when once we we die, uh, the physical body dies. It, one of the ideas that we lose individuality because we become a part of the whole. We become we return to God. We become a part of the whole thing, and and Kardec is making sure to tell us no. It's being revealed when the spirits died when individuals died and they were able to communicate to us, they affirm, they confirm that they continue to be themselves with their personalities, with their likes and dislikes, with their moral and, and intellectual uh, abilities. And they are one and only unique individuals, just as we are while incarnate. Okay, any more we, questions? Okay. We are we are we just study life and death on the spirits book on this last Thursday. So it's uh, coming from a different approach. We're discussing the same subject from this in the spirits book, right? And and actually Paco asked a very interesting question, and uh, but I'll leave that for the next item. Okay. On the vital on the vital fluid, vital principle. Okay, we continue 54. Numerous observations and irrefutable facts, which we shall deal with later, have demonstrated that human beings consist of three components. One, the soul or spirit, intelligent principle in which the moral sense resides. Two, the body, the material and dense envelope, which the spirit temporarily uses as a garment for fulfilling certain providential designs. Three, the perispirit, the fluidic, semi-material envelope which serves as the link between the soul and the body. Death is the destruction or better the disaggregation of the dense envelope that the soul abandons. The other envelope detaches itself and accompanies the soul which there, therefore always has an envelope. Although fluidic, ethereal, vaporous and invisible to us in its normal state, this latter envelope is also material despite the fact that until now we have been unable to capture it and submit it to analysis. The second envelope of the soul or perispirit therefore exists during corporeal life itself. It is the intermediary for all sensations, all sensations perceived by the spirit and through which the spirit transmits it, its will to the outside world and acts upon the body's physical organs. To make a material analogy, the perispirit is the electrical wiring that serves for the reception and the transmission of thought. Finally, this mysterious and imperceptible agent known also as a neural fluid, which performs such an important role in the organic workings of the body, is still not sufficiently taken into consideration regarding physiological and pathological phenomena. By taking only the ponderable material element into consideration, medical science deprives itself of a permanent cause of action in its study of the facts. However, this is not proper place to examine the issue, and we need only remember that knowing about the perispirit is the key to a host of problems that have until now been unexplainable. The perispirit is not one of those hypotheses in which science seeks recourse in order to explain a given fact. Its existence was not only revealed by the spirit, but has also been confirmed by observation, as we will have the occasion to demonstrate further on. For now, however, and in order not to anticipate issues that we will have to deal with later, we will limit ourselves to stating that whether during its union with the body or after its separation from it, the soul is never separated from its perispirit. 
Thank you. You're welcome. So, <clears throat> the deck have in part one demonstrated the existence of spirit, the perpetuation of our life beyond uh, the physical life with the physical body. The physical body we know, you don't have to study it in this book. Now there is a third element that's being introduced to us with what Kardec will create this terminology, invent this name, very spirit. Okay, so Kardec says here that the human being consists of three components. One, soul or spirit. And again, Kardec has not defined so yet. So he's, he's putting the two words together here, soul or spirit. The intelligent principle in which the moral sense resides. So it's a very strong statement that the spirit or soul is the one that holds the intelligence and the moral senses. It's stated over here that the moral senses, the intelligence does not belong to the body or this third things that come along, but belongs to the spirit, whatever that whatever the spirit is, okay? It, it's the hold, is the owner of the intelligence and the moral sense. The physical body, the dense material body that we carry while we are incarnate. And now the introduction of this third leg, these three things over here that is new to us are just coming to our knowledge now. We never heard of this before in our lives, right? The first time you hear this, something they call the petty spirit. And you call over here the fluidic semi material, which is not let to leave as somehow semi material envelope, which serves as the link between the soul or spirit and the body. So the petty spirit is something that's coming to us now, right? And again, I have said before that this is not a real study of spirit right now it will come later and we don't want to anticipate the book but there's some concepts that steps over here to, to us that we need to be absolutely comfortable with it to know for sure death is an organic phenomenon death is not a spiritual phenomenon that is the loss of vitality of the physical body we call it destruction. Uh, Cadex is better yet, should call it disaggregation of the dense envelope. So that is an organic thing, is when the brain active, the brain ceases to have electromagnetic activity, it dies, the body dies. Brain does not have electromagnetic activity, physical body cannot survive, it dies. At the moment of death, the decomposition starts almost immediately, right? All the little bugs in our gut start to eat us up right there. As no, the, the physical body, I'm sorry. Okay, so disaggregation is a proper word. We should say we are right now breathing the dead. It's not our statement because a lot of water that we are six percent of water, lots of other water will be evaporate into the air right now we are breathing the dead right now right <clears throat> now there is this other envelope this other envelope it says over here detach itself and accompanies the soul because it's telling over here this third third envelope he already called it the petty spirit when the physical body dies and the process of disaggregation starts there that physical body no longer serves the spirit, then that envelope detaches, the second envelope, the pet spirit, detach itself and accompanies the soul. When it Kazakh says that, it, it's telling us that that pet spirit that 
because the same material envelope was somehow attached to the physical body. If it's detached, because the wasp evil is attached. So there is a process in which it detaches, separates from the <clears throat> dead physical body and accompanies the soul, accompanies the spirit. And continue to exist in that spiritual realm, spiritual of that dimension, right? And this, this envelope, although fluidic, ethereal, vaporous, invisible to us in a normal state, is, is also material. So does it contradict semi material? No, now it's making a statement. It's also material, it's material, it's matter. Despite the fact that until now we have being unable to capture and admit and submit it to analysis. We as a science, science is our science has not yet been able to capture and study the Paris spirit, but it does exist. We have been with some some scientists try to weight it, right? And there is this this idea that it weights twenty one grams, right? But uh, even that is not uh, proved. Yes. Um, I think also here, um, it's 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 good to bring the concept of uh, the the difference between discarnation and that, right? We talked about it on Thursday. Uh, so everything you're describing here, the other envelope detaches itself and accompanies the soul. This is the discarnation, right? The physical body dying is one thing. Discarnation process is this what's being described here, right? Because uh, we we saw we talk a lot about uh, being the same thing, death and discarnation, and it's not exactly the same thing. Uh, death is the physical body. Discarnation is the separation when the peri spirit detaches itself from the physical body. Right, yeah, so death is an organic process, it's all biological, and discarnation is a spiritual process, it, it is exactly detachment of the spirit, perispiritual complex from that physical body that is now dead, that is discarnation. <clears throat> and it may take up to 72 hours. We are not going to go very far on that discussion right now. And then Kardec has placed it before. We, the spirit will be in a state of confusion, not sure of things, not by most of the case, not uh, Feel that separation, not know that ex ex that separation. By the time we come to some realization of ourselves, we may see that physical body laying somewhere, but already detached. Okay, and I think it's uh, good for us not to experience what's happening at that moment. But to be, I think it would be very tragic for us to experience that. So the second event, uh, envelope, no cardiac statement that is material, that it's matter, okay? And it performs many, 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 many functions. It's not just an envelope that is that, because it, 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 it's a very complex, it attached to the whole physical body has a specific areas in the perispirit that is correspondent to the physical organs, and that is a part of the perispirit that is associated to the liver. Can we call it the, the spiritual liver, the perispiritual liver? Call it if you want. Okay, because we, again, our science has not demonstrated, has not submitted to analysis yet. So if you want to say the perispirit has a liver, Go ahead and say it. I'd rather not. Like I say, there is a correspondent area, a correspondent part 
of the perispirit that is associated directly with the liver and the, for all the organs. Because the part of the perispirit is directly associated with the heart and with the, the sexual organs and every, every single organ of the physical body, there is a correspondent uh, area of the perispirit with this. Is with the parts of the physical body. And once you understand that, it will be such a jump in understanding the pathophysiology, causes of diseases, got such a great um, leap in our understanding of physi physiology that will make us able to understand perhaps treat, and more important, prevent um, series of pathologies, of illnesses that the physical body goes through that has its origin in the perispirit and vice versa as well. The diseases that we may abuse, the physical body that may be transferred to the perispirit in this two-way road of of relationship between the perispirit and the physical body. But Kardec places over here, this is a discussion for another time, just knowing that this interaction exists, exists, this association of the physical body and the perispirit body, organ by organ, some say cell by cell, exist. And once you understand that better, we will be able to take better care of ourselves. But that is a discussion for another, for another time. And, and the perispirit is not a hypothesis, right? The perispirit, the understanding of the perispirit is also not revealed only at the time of Kardec. It, it, this understanding was amongst the Greek, amongst the, the Egyptians, they have different names, I believe the Egyptians call it Akka, <clears throat> um, Paul of Tarsus spoke of perispirits. He, he called it the spiritual body, I believe. I don't remember. Spiritual body. Yeah. 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 So, so, so there is the perispirit is known um, way before. With the spiritism, we gain a lot of more understanding of it, but it's still very limited because, again, the the spirit is not going to do our job for us, a job of understand things that the physical part and material part, the perispirit is that belongs to us and we should be doing our universities and college. And um, personally, I think we're falling, falling behind. We should have a better understanding of it already. So it's um, it's existing a lot revealed by spirit, but it has also been confirmed by observation. And Kardec will demonstrate it to us. <clears throat> so upon, upon death, the soul will separate from the body, but will never be separated from the perispirit. This is a very important statement Kardec stood with you over here. The spirit you will always have a perispirit. You always have a spiritual body. Regardless of the intellectual level, high in, it will be more or less dense, but in order to act upon merit, the spirit will always have to have this uh, spiritual body or perispirit. This is a very important concept for us to understand as well. Uh, Ebony? Okay, what you just said, I think answered my question, but I'm gonna ask it again. Sure. So <laughs> what you, the last thing you said, my question was, um, so the Paris spirit, um, the, uh, sorry, the, the spirit uses its, spirit, its Paris spirit to manifest itself in both realms, in both the physical realm and the spiritual realm. Um, and um, while we're incarnated, um, the the peri spirit the the spirit acts upon its peri spirit through thought. So, for example, I think, and by thinking, my thoughts act upon my peri spirit 
which in turn sends information to my physical body to do what it is that I thought. Am I understanding this correct? Yeah, to perfection. It's exactly that. Okay. Right. All right. If you, okay. take, if you take an idea that what things, let's forget the spirit now, let's put us as just as a matter, right? The brain thinks, right? Which is not true, the spirit thinks. But in order to the brain to perform on its thought, it needs something. So we have hands, right? But if I want to, as I'm doing now, to send my thoughts to you, oh, where are you again, Grenada? Where? Yes, Grenada. Grenada. I could I could yell as as high as I could. You could not hear me, right? I need another instrument. Just to have a vocal cord does not suffice. So I'm using this technology right now, a computer that allows it, my voice to, to reach you. But in reality, it's not my voice that reaches me, it's, it's my thought, right? So my the brain would be the spirit, the vocal cord would be the petty spirit, but it's not enough to reach you yet. So the technology, the computer, would be the physical body that now allows me to interact with you. So you are receiving my thoughts via my vocal cords, and you are receiving it via the, the computer that we're using right now. So in analogy, the spirit would be the brain, the vocal cord would be the perispirit, and the, com the computer would be the physical body. Right? Does it make sense? Yes, understood. Thank you. I like, I like that, Elmo. I like that, that concept. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to bring a, a, a question that Paco asked on Thursday, and I think applies today also, but uh, I, give, I gave the answer on Thursday. I want Elmo to give the answer today. So we are studying the vital, we studied Thursday, the vital principle, vital fluid, right? We finished that chapter. And then uh, Paco asked, well, um, the, the vital fluid, vital principle animates the physical body. That is, does it also animate the perispirit? And I said, no, it doesn't. So he said, what does animate the perispirit? Um, Ebony answer, the thought. There you go. The thought animates, the, the vital principle is, is for organic life, so to say. So much so that when you leave the physical body behind and go back to the go back to the spiritual world, going a little bit ahead of the studies over here, the 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 part of the sped the petty spirit that related more directly with the vital fluid is so dense to materialize that it does not go back to the spiritual world of it does. It dematerializes so dense it is. We don't need vital principle in the spiritual world. We have the thought and the thought suffices. We don't need the, in, the, in this analogy, we don't need the computer anymore. You don't, therefore, we don't need the electricity to fuel the computer. The electricity would be the vital fluid in this case. We don't need that. The thought suffices. So much so that we can communicate in the spiritual world only by thought. You know, even in the vocal cord, but we don't know that, most of us. Does it make sense, Paco? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I have a question. It's more of a comment. I think um, as I'm thinking through this and reading all the theories or mentions there, like the neurofluid and some of the more concepts that coming through, it's I me. Mean, I know this came through the spirits book, 
But how was the process of putting this information together? Uh, Kardec is an academic, he's a scientist, and he thinks very, very logic about things. But was he putting this together and then submitting to the spirits for revision? Because we all sort of know today, and a lot of it is applied science doing research, but I can only imagine how difficult, right, was to put some statements out there at that point of the of the, of his career and even the beginning of spiritism uh, and sort of and I know he got refuted they rebuted many times because obviously it couldn't be proved but again progress tells us otherwise but how was the process of putting some of those statements together and sort of getting validation um that's a very good question um that demonstrates the intellectual and moral abilities of Kardec right in order to put all the spirits together, to to receive the revelation of the spiritual orders was not enough. That could be done for anyone. To receive those, those revelations and make associations with what we have here with our science, to create that analogy, because that's how we learn and understand things. You have to make comparison with what is with what we know already, and then go to what we don't know, right? You would have somebody who had a pretty half bag of understanding of intellectual abilities, right? To digest this and make those proper analogies with things that we have over here. Because as I said, was an academic. <laughs> He was not only a um, a teacher of teacher, you no, know, a pedagogue. He was an anatomist. He was a physiologist. He spoke seven languages. His name was pretty brilliant, right? That allows him to receive information and make analogies with the heavy bag of information that he already ha has. Okay and reach conclusions. When he reached those conclusions, he said, oh, I figured this out. One, the, like Paco very often uses, am I, am I making sense? Am I correct in thinking this way or thinking that way? And then the spirit will say, oh yeah, well, you, you are on the right path, keep going. Or no, perhaps you have to twist to know some of this analogy that you make or not so good, and we see that a lot in the in the in the spirits book. And when Karl Kardec put the questions as that instead that he had to reach a conclusion, and 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 the spirit says not so. That's not really the path. You are you are going the wrong direction, okay? But you have to have that have bag bag of knowledge, you no, know, to be able to reach this or that conclusion, right or wrong. But at least we are using something. And then the the dispute you correct, you say, no, no, you're not going the right way. Look at this way. Oh yeah, you're right. Keep going in that direction that you reach the proper conclusion. Right? So to us, it will come a point in, in our stories that we're just gonna have to take his words because we trust the guy, you trust that he's smart enough and, and has no other attention but to to educate us, right? Or you doubt and say, mm -mm, this, is, this is a little bit too far for me. There are top chapters in, in the Spirit's book that I had rejected for a long time, not rejected, I said, no, 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 this doesn't make sense. I'm not gonna take this one, and I did not. And it took me a while to listen to other people, seeing things from different, People presenting things to me from a different angle from where I am looking at, that things start to make sense. And we had to do the same process, I believe. And I believe that that's what Kardec had done also. He receives the information, he receives the revelations and information from spirits who are just as educated as he was and those who are a lot less educated than than what he was and and he puts all those things together and, and reach conclusions and then as you said the the, the spirits will have to add it right because it's hard to imagine that everything that he kardec 
figure out all by himself. No, there's a lot of work of the spirits. And Kardec says that in um, well, Kardec in his notes in um, Osmo's work, right? In the, the last book, that is not his book, by the way, that a lot of times it was the spirits would have to redirect him to make corrections. You're not going, and we see again, we see that in the spirits book as, as we read, read it. But we come a point for us individually that does not have such a heavy bag of understanding that we're just going to have to take his words for it or put that aside. I'm not, I'm not comfortable with this idea. I don't understand this. And I think there is a, a, flaw over here that I'm going to have to figure out later. And as thinking being, we should do that. And I think the doctrine that does not condemns, cannot demands anything for us, if the doctrine demands anything which does not, is that use your own intelligence. Again, you better off reject 10, ten truth than accept one lie. If it doesn't make sense to you, you're not obliged to take it. But if it is the truth, eventually you will, and then you'll take it. Thank you. So I sometimes just should not take this for granted, right? Because a lot of it was such a long time ago, and the amount of rejections you probably suffered. It's pretty amazing that today, obviously, a lot of it is proven and you know, common knowledge. But obviously, he's introducing something very new at the time. And not only have to have conviction, but you also have to have a lot of uh, uh, courage, right? And I think this is pretty remarkable. Yeah, I think I think courage is, 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 is an essential part in this discussion. And the same courage to accept, the same courage to reject things that you are not able to reason yet. But again, if it's the truth, eventually it will as long as persist and seek in the truth. And uh, we should uh, we should go uh, beyond Kardec, right? Because um, I was uh, listening this week and uh, I learned that uh, the, the first census in Brazil was done in 1872. And uh, so this is uh, 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 25 years after uh, the publication of the Spirit book. And the population of Brazil, 99.7% were Catholic. Mm. So you imagine the pioneers of spiritism in Brazil trying to disseminate something that was with 100%, so to say, of, uh, of the population was Catholic, right? So those pioneers that spread spiritism, not only in Brazil, but other places need to be admired also, right? Because it's... You know, today we, we face much less resistance. You know, we, we just face a little bit of discrimination, prejudice, but nothing compared to the times of Kardec and the pioneers. Yeah, for sure. Yes, that's true. Okay. Any more comments, questions? Are we really comfortable with? But have so far have learned of the spiritism of, of the petty spirit. One, it exists. One, it's intermediary between the center of intelligence and feelings, being the spirit or soul, and the physical body. That the petty spirit is matter. Is matter. It is not does not carry any intelligence. All the intelligence comes from the spirit. Okay, and now when we talk about shape, if we're going to have a human shape, I think that is, is going to be more developed by Kardec yet. But this is very, on the end, we're always going to have it. We, the spirit, in order to function, would have to have something to apply our intelligence and our, and our sentiments over, and that is the Peri spirit or a spiritual body, always gonna, going to have it. Regardless, regardless of the moral development, the more that's going to come later, the more evolved we are, the more ethereal, the more spiritualized, 
and the less, the more dense, the more materi materialized the petty spirit will be, but you're always going to have it. And I think it's important to reinforce this notion because I know there are people that uh, say that uh, after we reach perfection, we no longer have a pure spirit. And uh, if that was the case, Kardec would have said here, the soul is never separate from its spirit spirit until we reach perfection. It doesn't say that. So even a perfect spirit still has the pure spirit, right? That uh, we know, we, we talk a lot about Jesus reincarnate, uh, sorry, Jesus incarnating on earth. Uh, it needed a pair of spirit. So, but I think it's always important to reinforce the notion because you'll find people saying that perfect spirits have no pair of spirit. Yeah, 55. 55. We have already stated elsewhere that the spirit is a flame, a spark. This applies to the spirit per se as the intellectual and moral principle, but we do not know how to assign a specific shape to it. However, no matter what its degree of evolution, it is always clothed with an envelope or perispirit, spirit whose nature becomes more and more etherealized as it purifies and raises itself in the spirit hierarchy. Have to bring it up. Uh, thus, the idea of form is for us so inseparable from the idea of spirit that, that we cannot conceive of, of one without the other. The perispirit, therefore, comprises an inter integral component of the spirit, just as the body comprises an integral part of the human being. However, the perispirit is not, a, is not the spirit, just as the body by itself is not the human being, because the perispirit does not think. Rather, it is for the spirit what the body is for the individual, the agent or instrument of activity. Okay. I think we really discussed that a lot already. Um, if there's any question, please ask. The um, amazing, I always, always amazing, I would say that the, the thing that's more common to us, I think that we use so much, the thing that it's us ourselves is, the things that you know the least, basically nothing about it, right? And what is this thing is? The spirit itself. What is the spirit? I mean, not even not even the spirits the of of this doctrine, the spirit of light, gave us that answer yet. Yet. Maybe another 45, three living incarnations will be able to get that answer, right? We don't know nothing about the spirit. It's been defined to us as over here, a flame or a sparkle. But we know that it's the owner of the senses, is the owner of the sentiments, and it's the owner of the thought. And we know that without something that it can use to express that intelligence, to express that sense, or to receive those senses, and to express the sentiment as an intelligence, it needs an instrument. And that instrument is what we call the Paris period. And for the least evolved to the perfect spirit, the Christ, if that spirit wants to express itself, you will have to use that petty spirit. And of course, the petty spirits of the, the spirits who it's just starting its journey now, being created now, the intermediate level, us humans and the Christs, we would imagine that petty spirit is not going to be the same. But there will be a petty spirit. And we have they understand that the more evolved, the more ethereal, the least dense materialized it will be, but it's still a pair spirit, always going to have it. So much so that you cannot consider a spirit separated from the pair spirit and vice versa. Uh, and here we can, or oh, I'm confident to say what Eben has said before, that the perispheres get created perispheres solely to serve the spirit. 
I am comfortable in saying that. Right, and there will always exist an association of the spirit, but do not start thinking that this, that spirit spirit has its own intelligence, has its own sentiments. No, it doesn't. The, the intelligence, the sentiments, the senses belong to the spirit. Even though we cannot imagine one without the other, they are two different entities. This we need to be absolutely sure of it. Okay, uh, we have time, time for one more, if there is no questions. Fifty-six. Okay, fifty-six. The form of the perispirit is the human form, and when it appears to us, it is usually in the same form by which we knew the spirit during his physical life. That is why we might believe that the perispirit, even when disconnected, from all the components of the body must have somehow modeled itself after the body and retain its form afterwards. Such does not appear to be the case, however, except for some differences in detail and the organic modifications that are required for the environment in which the being must live. The human form is the same for all inhabitants on all globes, at least according to the spirits, and it also the form of all discarnate spirits, who only possess the perispirit. It is also the same form by which the angels or pure spirits have been represented down through the ages. Therefore, we must conclude that the human form is a typical form for all human beings, no matter what degree of the hierarchy they belong to. However, the perispirit's subtle matter is not as persistent or inflexible as the body's compact matter. We might say that it is flexible and expandable. And that is why the form it assumes, though an, expect, though an exact copy of the body is not absolute, it is not molded according to the will of the spirit, who can give it any appearance it wants to, whereas the physical envelope confronts it with invincible resistance. Disentangled from the obstacle that have repressed it, the Paris spirit Okay. Expands, con contracts, or transforms itself. In other words, it lends itself to all sorts of metamorphoses according to all that acts upon it. It is thanks to this property of its fluidic envelope that the spirit can make itself rec recognizable when necessary by taking on the exact appearance that he had during its physical life and even display the very same physical defects that could serve as signs for recognizing it. Hence, spirits beings are beings like us, comprising a population around us that is invisible, invisible in its normal state. We say normal state because, as we shall see, this invisibility is not absolute. Okay. Now come to form, right? The physical body has a very established form that we recognize as having four appendices and have a head and a neck that connects the trunk to the to the head and you know two eyes and nose and once we see that form we recognize that as being a human species right when we look at a dog by looking at his physical body we recognize this as belong to the species of um canis familiaris, right? And we see a wolf. We look at its physical body and we recognize that being a canis lupus. This is the speech of canis lupus, right? What about the spirit? Or what about the peri spirit? When let's uh, let's Imagine individuals who are seeing mediums who can see the peri spirits. How they're gonna see? How? What are they gonna see if they see a peri spirit? Oh, they're gonna see the form that you recognize as Homo sapiens, as the species Homo sapiens. This look like having the 
the same form as the physical body. We don't know. With a head and a neck that connects the head to the trunk and four appendices and so forth and so on. And Kardec makes the statement here that's been revealed to the spirit. That's the form that all petty spirits have in in any globe. Okay, so except for some differences in details and the organic modification that are required for the environment in which the being must live, the human form is the same for all inhabitants of all globes. Um, this is one of the information that we will take or reject. I don't think there's a way to can dispute, but you can, but in order to dispute, you have to, to present your own argument, your alternative. I don't have an alternative. I'll take what's given over here, okay? But Kardec's talking here about very spirit, not talking about physical body. If you read the book, um, Letters from a Dad, that is a, a book that was written by uh, Francisco Cândido Xavier's mother, in that book, she reveals that she has had that experience to travel through all the globes, to all the planets or celestial bodies, whatever you want to use, where spirits also reincarnate for the journeys. And she presented very different forms of, of physical body in those, in those globes and those celestial bodies, right? Not the the normal human appearance that we are comfortable with. And Kardec says there, is, there are modifications of the organic instrument that is required in accordance with the environment of that world or that planet, the celestial body, wherever they live. If we imagine that the spirits will incarnate in celestial bodies, in planets, let's say, where the normal temperature, temperature is, let's say, 150 degrees centigrade below zero. And the wind usually blow, blows at a speed of 300 knots per hour. So to say, you know, it's some crazy things like that. It will be inconceivable. And in those, there is no oxygen in those, in those worlds. It is inconceivable to, to imagine that we're gonna have the same organic form as we have here in physical body and in this planet that this body is appropriate for the range of temperature for oxygen for <clears throat> the the atmosphere that you have here the weight of of the pressure of the air around us our body is meant for this world it's Inconceivable to, to imagine that, let's say, if there was life on Mars, would it have to be different? There's no oxygen. The wind blows at speeds that would destroy everything on Earth, right? Or in Venus, where they, they, they just receive so much direct sunlight, sun energy, that it's inconceivable that our physical body could live there, or if it could. If there is life over there, would have to be of completely different organic shape, organic matter, right? And since you know the all bodies, celestial bodies are inhabited, we have to imagine that they have different organic bodies. But it says over here that the perispheres you you have the same form. Take it or reject it. I'm on the wall personally. I'm not taking this 100% yet, personally, right? Yeah. But I'm presenting the book and not present my ideas. Okay, that tells over here that all oh, spirits, it being revealed by uh, the spirits. It, they see he didn't make that decision, conclusion himself. It's being revealed to him that all oh, petty spirits has the human form, picked as is. Accept or reject, I'm on the wall right now.
yeah no. again we we need to to define what's human form right? again um well, the form, it, human it, form it, is being presented here there are no yeah two but, appendages but the human... a head on top of a trunk and yeah that's the form form is the form yeah so that but that applied to the different uh, different uh, atmospheres in different places have can have different compositions according to the planet that's what we we learn also right the perispirit changes as it changes from one planet to the other right uh so the, the perispirit for those living on earth have the the matter that belongs to earth form also the perispirit right so again it's uh, we enter into to, to the rain uh, to the realm of speculation yeah No, Kardec says he has a human form in all globes. That's what's being re revealed to him. In all globes, the perispirit will have the human form, but not the organic body. The organic body will be modified and acquired into the most atmosphere of that planet. It's very hard for me to take that yet. But that's what's being Kardec stating here. Another thing Kardec is to say to here that's very good is something that we can call it malleability, all right? Which is this metamorphosis that the petty spirits being so malleable, being able to modify its shape in accordance to the desire of the spirit. Remember the spirit has intelligence and intelligence acts upon the spirit and since the spirit is very malleable it can be modified according to the will of of this of the of the spirit so the example that has been used forever is if my grandmother chooses to show up to me if show up to me when she was 15 with the parents of when she was 15 years old, you make no sense, you're not recognized. In order to be recognized, you have to appear to me with the parents that I am able to recognize her as someone on her 50s, 60s, 70s. Then, then you make completely sense of the world. Look at it and say, oh, that is my grandma. And the spirit has that ability to to modify the appearance in the form of the 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 the, the petty spirit to be rec to make itself recognizable. Uh, one of the questions, let's say, Emmanuel. We know some of the previous lives of Emmanuel as um, Publius Publi Lentulus in in Rome as a priest. Um, the ring that did some work in Brazil, and th if Emmanuel is able to, with the power of his mind, to present himself as one or another, and has presented himself to Chico, Chico Xavier mostly as with the form of the Roman um, senator, usually dressed in that form, and all those things whatever reasons he chose, he chose to do so. So what I'm saying is even if an, an incarnate spirit may be able to present itself to someone else on a different form, on a different form that is recognized to that person to, to whom it's presented itself. So in theory, theory, I could show myself to someone else in in another part of this globe while my physical body is sleeping with a different form or the different appearance of my parent spirit having the know-how i don't know if i have that know-how i don't think i do to modify very minimally in this case because i'm still attached to this physical body but in a way that will be recognizable to someone else now a discarnate kind of spirit to no longer carry a physical body will be, be able to make drastic changes. Some involuntary, 
by the command of the mind, meaning that if I see myself as a monster because of the crimes that I'm committed, then guilty is making me look at myself as a monster. I may modify my parent spirit and to the parents of a monster, associate with my culture in the sense, right? How does a monster look like? Which would be different from different cultures. But that is one of the characteristics of the of the Paris period. Comments, questions? I um, wanted to say that I agree with you, Elmo. Um, I know that well, a lot of me physical. I know from experience that we in our community here in Grenada, we have a lot of physical mediums. Um, and I use the term a lot loosely here, so bear with me. Um, but um, we haven't had the explanation as to why um, so many people, uh, some people have, have given accounts of seeing spirits manifesting themselves in very ugly forms. Um, now we know it's because of, you know, the malleability of the Perry spirit and um, the spirit has the will to, if it has the will to make, to manifest itself in whatever form that it chooses, it, it can do so to a seen medium. Um, you know, we've had accounts of people seeing, like you said, monsters, uh, people appearing as animals, you know, to scare other people and so on. Um, even when you think about uh, the phenomena of people seeing aliens, I wonder um, if it's not uh, spirits with perhaps bad intentions who uh, molded their peri spirit to appear to people in that in that particular form or seeing mediums in, in that particular form to create the impression that there are other beings who actually appear like that in other worlds that are that are visiting earth i don't know it's just a thought but i know here in in grenada um we've had accounts of seeing mediums who don't know that they are seeing mediums but they they've been seeing um manifestations of of quote-unquote monsters yeah we that have been demonstrated by um by the literature and spiritist literature in the books of andrea Luis that um, many spirits have reshaped its bad spirit very often, unfortunately, is to scare people. Um, and it can be very scary. And, but sometimes it happens uh, not um, by desire, by, by the guilt feelings that spirit may have, uh, that it's reshaped its own bad spirit by the power of the mind but not even um, by desire, just by less. I see myself as a, one example in the memories of a suicide in which one of the spirits lose its very spiritual hands because it repeatedly says, I was, do not deserve to have, to have had that hands killed the woman that I love. And he says that so many times with such intense desire that the Paris spirits loses its hand. And you reincarnate in the last reincarnation without those hands. Uh, time, is, time is up. Um, any more comments? I don't want to hold people here. Um, we can go to our final prayers. Yeah, uh, before the next uh, Sunday, we will do the Q&A. We will have the Q&A session, right? Um, so, yeah, good questions. One, huh? Yeah, uh, Wayne, uh, Wayne, sent an e Wayne sent an email that he was out of uh, power today. That's why he couldn't join. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I think with this topic, at the top that we're doing the Spirits book now, there's a lot of rooms for a lot of wonderful questions. No. Okay. Carol? Yes, thank you very much, Elmo, for
for, for hosting today. Thank you, John. And thank you everyone who, who are participating today. Infinite creator and supreme intelligence, we give thanks to be together again as brothers and sisters for our study of the medium's book, chapter one, the action of spirits upon matter. Spirits are human souls without physical bodies. The peri spirit is the intermediary link between the body and the spirit. Many cultures acknowledge and believe in the existence of the peri spirit. When the dense body dies, the peri spirit disconnects from the physical body, organ by organ, cell by cell. This may take approximately 72 hours to complete, which might be a time of confusion for a discarnating soul. We will always have a spiritual body or peri spirit, which operates in both the physical and spiritual worlds. Even a perfect spirit will have a peri spirit. And eventually we will know what a spirit truly is. We give thanks to the spiritual benefactors and the good spirits for being with us today and guiding us and inspiring us. May we receive the love, light, and peace of Christ within us and for our loved ones, our teachers, our directors, the counselors, the mediums, the healers, the workers, and all who are participating and unify, unifying this energy. We pray for inner peace and especially for world peace now and for those who are suffering in the physical and spiritual worlds. We pray for SGNY and all spiritus centers throughout the world that they may grow, expand and be protected by day and by night. As we close, we humbly ask for safety and protection as we return to our family, friends, loved ones and coworkers. May we remind ourselves now to go forth as beacons of love, of light, of peace, of service, and of charity, which is love in action. So be it. <laughs>